How fast do arrows fly? I don't know. They go pretty fast, but how fast accurately? Do they go faster than an airplane? Maybe faster than high speed, high, uh, highway speeds? Uh, maybe faster than a race car? I don't know. Measuring speed could be problematic as uh, most of us don't have access to police radar guns. Uh, secondly, you may not want to put yourself in front of a flying arrow. And thirdly, the arrow may be too small for the radar gun to uh, react accurately and uh, measure the speed accurately. Luckily, we can calculate. In this video, I'll show you how. First off, a little refresher on the concept of speed. When you talk about speed, like 12 miles an hour, you say the word 12 miles an hour or 12 miles per hour or 6 miles per half an hour or 3 miles per 15 minutes which is the same again as uh, 1 mile per 5 minutes you talk about speed in terms of distance and time you always use those words miles per hour feet per second Okay, so all you need to do is uh, measure distance, uh, what distance it takes from the arrow from uh, this point where it is released from the bowstring, from uh, this point, from the end of your draw length. Once you've got distance and, uh, <coughs> and once you have the time amount, you can determine the speed. So let's get started with the distance. On this arrow, I... Uh, put two masking tapes and uh, this is how you measure distance oops other way around there we go there I marked it with big black thick felt pen so you can see it but uh, normally I would do it with a pencil so I want a nice and fine mark so there I marked the arrow there at the point where it's supported by the little arrow rest on the bow this mark shows you the point of release where it gets detached from the string and the other mark here at the other end of the arrow is marked in to show you the uh, to, to show you the uh, position where the arrow is when I draw the bow now between these two marks you can measure distance with a tape measure and uh, a tape measure use is uh, fairly easy and this is something you can control you can't control uh, digital uh, uh, gadgetry and uh, a radar gun and there's way too many variables and things can go wrong with using a tape measure this uh, just a very few things can go wrong and all of those are within your control so I use the tape to uh, I'm not using the wobbly end of a tape measure okay I use the 100 millimeter mark to line it up with my first felt mark and I'm taking a reading there and subtracting 100 millimeters there uh, to uh, compensate for uh, not using the first 100 millimeters there on the tape and I've got myself a distance this one shows that my draw length is 475 millimeters now throughout this calculation I'm gonna use metric and this is why if I measured feet and inches um, it would be a little bit of problematic when uh, feet inches get multiplied or divided and uh, let me illustrate this real fast 6.5 inch uh, feet 6.5 feet is not the same as 6.6 6 feet and 5 inches okay 6.5 feet is 6 feet 6 inches not 6 feet 5 inches okay so the decimal digits feet in decimals and feet with inches don't mix it they are totally different and uh, when you have to do multiplication and division with uh, feet inches you're gonna need feet decimals I'm not gonna show you how to convert feet inches to feet decimals okay so we're just gonna use metric and, the, and at the end of the calculation you can uh, 
uh, you can convert it to uh, kilometer per hour, miles per hour, feet per second, whatever suits your fancy. Okay. So uh, that's why I have 475 millimeters as distance. Second one, time. How do we determine time? The time the arrow takes to travel from this position to this position where it gets released. Again, you don't have to over engineer this and overthink this. You don't need a sophisticated timing device to measure time uh, because uh, measuring time uh, would be problematic. Uh, if you're trying to measure it with a stopwatch with your buddy, it could be extremely, extremely inaccurate. So, again, luckily for us, we can calculate it. Calculate ac accurate to four, six decimal digits easily. What you need is a fish scale. This is the kind of thing people weigh fish with. And uh, this is a $10 device, and uh, we need to measure force. You need to measure the force that you exert when you pull on the string of the bow. And you're gonna have to measure it uh, in uh, five centimeter increments or every two inches. To do that, you're gonna have to mount your arrow again and uh, have some uh, more pieces of masking tape on it or have a longer stretch on it and uh, where you can see the distance traveled and every two inches you're gonna have to take a reading on this scale here this one measures from 0 to 22 kilograms or 50 pounds and as I exert force on the bowstring you can see that the little indicator uh, shows uh, more and more force is being exerted so if you don't have one of these uh, probably the most accurate is mounting the arrow upside down on something figure it out and uh, hang weight some barbells, dumbbells or weight plates, what have you, that's calibrated and you know how much they weigh. Start hanging weights and uh, see how much weight you need to hang on the bowstring to have this displacement accomplished. And record the data every two inches again, every five centimeters. Because uh, you need to make an average out of your measurement according to my measurements I'm going from 0 to 8 kilogram force throughout the uh, full displacement from start position where the arrow gets released from the bowstring to this position where it gets started okay so you need to measure force and this is how you do it you don't need again to uh, over engineer and over design things you don't need a load cell you don't need a digital force gauge uh, all you need is uh, some uh, weight that you can hang on the on the bowstring and uh, uh, make something that you can uh, clamp or mount your uh, bow to and you can uh, load the bowstring okay we're gonna calculate time the time it takes for the bow to travel sorry the arrow to travel from my from the end of my uh, pull length to the point of release by using force and one more thing mass and uh, for mass uh, I did what I did was uh, I took three of these arrows to a post office where they measure uh, parcels and uh, mails fairly accurately and I put them on the scale and I measured three of these. I then verified my measurements at the uh, local pharmacy where on a pharmaceutical grade scale accurate to uh, one thousandth of a gram. Okay. So these are the variables you need and now we can calculate time. You need force and you need mass. Let me show you how the calculation looks like. There. 
thereabouts. We are set to go. Now, we're going to use uh, Newton's second law to calculate the time. Once again, what's given? What's given is mass. And I calculated that the that my arrow weighs 24. Point, what do I have? 24.19 grams. Oops, 24.19 grams. Now, I'm going to need kilograms for this calculation and uh, to do that I need to do this. 24.19 grams is the same as 0 0.02419 kilograms. I already have distance covered with a tape measure that pretty much everybody has and my draw length is uh, 475 millimeters which I'm not going to use as is, I'm going to convert it to meters and that's how it looks like when it's converted to meters. Uh, the third amount is the force that I measured and I mentioned that it was between uh, 0 to 8 kilograms and uh, the average of this one is uh, 4 kilograms and I'm going to need to make uh, newtons out of it. To do that you have to multiply 4 by 9.8 meter per second square acceleration and I got out of it 39.2 newtons. Now, this is the tricky part. We need a formula here. According to Newton's second law, once you have a mass and you want to accelerate it, you're going to have to exert some kind of force on it. And that's exactly what happens. The uh, limbs on the bow store the uh, force, the energy, that's, and it gets transferred to the arrow and uh, sends it flying. Now, the concept of acceleration contains within itself the concept of speed. And this is how it looks like. Uh, acceleration means that the speed of the arrow changes over a certain amount of time. So it means uh, a change of speed, velocity, over a certain amount of time. Now the change of speed that we discussed before means that you're covering a certain amount of distance in a certain amount of time and that speed changes in a certain amount of time. And I'm just gonna put the rest of the letters here. This formula mass times distance over time over time equals force is the same as the original one I wrote up here. Okay, The arrow does have acceleration. It accelerates from this point the end of my draw length. It accelerates from here to this point where the uh, string, is, uh, string has returned to its uh, normal position and then the arrow gets detached and released. To solve this equation for time you're gonna get this one square root mass times distance divided by force. That's how you do this one. Uh, I'm not gonna do algebra with you too much but uh, you can watch Khan Academy for that. So to uh, put numbers into this equation you get mass that was so many kilograms 0 0.024 oops 0 0.02419 times distance that was 0 0.475 and then divided by force which is 39.2 newtons equals that number and then you need to square root that answer and you get that as a result and it is 0 0.01712 and there's more digits but that's pretty accurate already and this is seconds so this calculation shows us that there's the result that the time it takes for the arrow to travel from the end of my draw line to the point where it gets released from the bowstring it takes that much time and I want to cover out some of the digits and just show you that one 
This one reads as 0 0.01 or one hundredth of a second. Now we have a little more, a few more digits there. So it's a little more than one hundredth of a second, but not as uh, much as two hundredths of a second. It's just a little more than one hundredth of a second. There's no way you can measure accurately one hundredth of a second or uh, with so many decimals without spending large amounts of money on uh, timekeeping and uh, electronic gadgetry. Don't need to do that. You can just calculate fairly painlessly. Now, to get the speed of the arrow, velocity of the arrow is, uh, like I said, distance over time. And uh, that is calculated as, there is our distance, 0. 475 meters divided by that was the time 0 0.01712 seconds and we get out of that calculation 0 0.475 divided by 0 0.01712 equals 27.74 meters per second. Okay, that's the speed of the flying arrow. Now, what's that in uh, kilometer per hour? You have to times this amount by 3.6 and you get 99.88 kilometer per hour. So it's just a little bit under 100 kilometer per hour speed. So that's we determined, which is about the same as about the same as about 60 miles per hour. So we determined that the speed of the uh, flying arrow as it leaves the bowstring on this particular arrow uh, weighing this much and uh, with this particular uh, bow which is a, a $60 cheap bow the speed of the arrow is uh, 60 miles an hour or in feet per second I'm just gonna grab 27.74 and times it by 3.28 oopsie 27.74 times 3.28 is uh, about 91 feet per second okay it's approximately the same I got the conversion factors on uh, underneath my uh, underneath the clip you can see among the notes my conversion factors so it's about 90, approximately equal to 91 feet per second. There we go. That's how fast the flying arrow goes.